In this video, we will look at the generalized alpha method. This is one of the most widely used implicit methods in structural dynamic simulations. Let us shortly review what do we mean by explicit and implicit methods. In an explicit method, we compute the future state of a system from information from the current state. Explicit methods are always conditionally stable. We saw that when using the central difference method, the time step size must be smaller than a certain value that is completely governed by the smallest time period of the system. And usually, this time period is not known in advance. Moreover, a finite element discretization of a structure generates spurious high-frequency oscillations that are not relevant for the overall behavior of the structure. A structure with a million degrees of freedom will have a complex dynamic response with the nodes vibrating at different frequencies. You can test this in a small example in the upcoming exercises. We can overcome this issue by using implicit formulations. In an implicit method, we compute the future state of a system from information from the current state and the future state. We have already looked into the implicit Euler scheme in one of our previous videos. The principal reason for using implicit solution methods is to allow for larger time step sizes. If the solution remains stable for arbitrarily large values of the time step, the method is said to be unconditionally stable. Keep in mind, stability does not mean accuracy. Stability means the solution does not blow up. Moreover, if the method is also able to get rid of spurious high frequencies, the method is called numerically dissipative. The development of unconditionally stable and numerically dissipative methods for structural dynamics goes back to the pioneering work of Newmark in the 1950s. Newmark used a linear acceleration approximation. That is, the acceleration within a time step was assumed to be linear, and he introduced two empirical tuning parameters, gamma and beta, that can be tuned to obtain an unconditionally stable, accurate, and numerically dissipative method. In 1977, Hilber, Hughes, and Taylor improved the Newmark method by introducing a new parameter, alpha f. In 1981, Wood, Bosak, and Zinkevich proposed another modification of the Newmark method by introducing a parameter alpha m. Finally, in 1993, Chung and Hulbert generalized the work of Newmark, Hilber, and Wood to obtain the generalized alpha method. Here, as you see, we have four parameters, gamma, beta, alpha m, and alpha f. In this lecture, we will look at the generalized alpha method from which all the other methods can be derived. Here is our discrete timeline. The first step in the derivation of the generalized alpha method is the introduction of the parameters alpha m and alpha f. These parameters denote a certain offset within the time step. Right now, these parameters are not fixed they could lie anywhere between Tn and Tn plus 1. Now let us write the semi-discrete equation of motion. The acceleration is specified at Tn plus 1 minus alpha m, shown in green. The velocity and displacement is specified at Tn plus 1 minus alpha f, shown in blue. If alpha m and alpha f is 0, we get the Newmark method. If alpha m is zero, we get the Hilber method. And if alpha f is zero, we get the Bosak method, also called the Wood method. You might be wondering why we are violating the balance equation. It might look strange. Actually, the structural response is anyway smeared between Tn and Tn plus one. In reality, the time between Tn and Tn plus 1 does not exist. Our simulations just jump from states Tn to Tn plus 1. 
Now let us look at the displacement, velocity and the acceleration. We can write these quantities, that is, the quantities defined between Tn and Tn plus 1 in terms of the values at n and n plus 1 using a midpoint approximation. This is just a parameterization of the displacement, velocity and acceleration. By introducing these approximations, we can move anywhere in between the time step using the parameters alpha m and alpha f. If we introduce these three quantities in the semi-discrete expression here, we still have the displacement at n plus 1, the velocity at n plus 1, and the acceleration at n plus 1 that are unknown. However, we have only one equation. We all know to solve a linear system, we need three equations to solve the three unknowns or we have to approximate the unknown quantities in terms of known quantities. To get rid of the velocity and acceleration, we can use the linear acceleration approximation. As the name suggests, the acceleration within a time step is approximated as a linear function. So in the above expression, if tau is zero, we get acceleration at n, and if tau is delta t, we get acceleration at n plus 1. Thus, we have managed to approximate the acceleration. Here, Newmark introduced the parameter gamma. To be specific, he introduced 2 gamma. This parameter is introduced purely for reasons of numerical stability and accuracy of the method. This is like hacking the linear approximation method. Keep in mind that this parameter is a tuning parameter that we can tune as we wish. We can always set it to 0.5 later to get the linear acceleration approximation. To obtain the velocity, we can simply integrate the acceleration. After integration, we can use the boundary condition, that is, velocity at tau is 0 is u dot n to eliminate the constant of integration c. Finally, by setting tau as delta t, we can get the velocity at n plus 1. This is already great news. We have rewritten the velocity at n plus 1 as a function of the acceleration at n plus 1. Thus, we have eliminated the future velocity, that is the velocity at n plus 1, we have to now eliminate the acceleration at n plus 1, and we are done. So, using the velocity approximation, we can integrate the velocity to obtain the displacement. Now, Newmark introduced a beta. Please note, gamma by 3 is not necessarily equal to beta, but gamma by 3 has been replaced by beta very subtle difference. Gamma and beta are handled as independent parameters. Like I said, we can always put beta as 1 by 6, that is, by substituting gamma is equal to 1 by 2 to get a consistent linear acceleration approximation. Now we can use some algebra to rearrange this expression of the displacement in terms of the acceleration. The second term is just a rearrangement of the first term. This we can substitute into our expression for the velocity to obtain finally the velocity and acceleration in terms of future displacement and past quantities. That is, right now we have the acceleration at n plus 1 as a function of the displacement at n plus 1 and the displacement velocity and acceleration at n. Similarly, we have the velocity at n plus 1 as a function of the displacement at n plus 1 and the displacement velocity and acceleration at n. Here are our new mark approximations. Now we can substitute these expressions in the midpoint approximation that we derived earlier. Here. Thus, 
Our only unknown is the displacement un plus 1. This we can solve by using this equation. Substituting the generalized midpoint approximation and the Newmark approximations and doing some algebraic manipulation, we get ku is equal to f. The only unknown here is un plus 1. And this we can solve using a linear solver. So given the mass matrix, the stiffness matrix and the damping matrix, and by specifying the parameters alpha m, alpha f, beta and gamma, and given the displacements, velocities and accelerations at the previous time step, we can compute the new displacement at time step n plus 1. Given the displacement at n plus 1, we can compute the velocity at n plus 1 and the acceleration at n plus 1. These new quantities can then be used to compute further quantities in the future time steps. In a typical simulation, in a loop, we compute these three expressions for each time increment. If you are really not into all the theory we discussed so far, this is the only expression that you need to implement for a dynamic simulation in MATLAB, in Python, or whichever software you use. Let us review. We introduce alpha m and alpha f using the midpoint approximations. We use the linear acceleration method to eliminate the future velocity and acceleration. We also introduce two new parameters, gamma and beta here. After that, we obtain the effective expression ku is equal to f. This can be solved by specifying the mass, damping, stiffness, and the initial conditions. Here, we don't need any special starting procedure like the central difference scheme. Now let us look at the numerical dissipation characteristics of the method. This procedure is similar to the one we used in analysis of the central difference scheme. As we are analyzing the numerical dissipation characteristics, we can remove the physical dissipation term from the first equation. The dynamics is now completely governed by the frequency omega. Here is the amplification matrix for the generalized alpha method. Here are the properties of the method. Through accuracy analysis and stability analysis, we can compute the optimal values for the parameters. Moreover, we can write all the parameters using one simple quantity called rho infinity. Rho infinity determines the level of numerical dissipation you want to introduce into the simulation. For more details, see the paper of Chungan Hulbert. In this course, we will skip the details. For a practical implementation, here is the optimal choice of parameters as a function of rho infinity. So given a level of numerical dissipation that you want to introduce into the system, that is rho infinity, that lies between 0 and 1, you can use the following table to specify which method you want to solve the dynamics of the structure. Different methods have different damping characteristics. So substituting these parameters into the amplification matrix and computing the eigenvalues and estimating the maximum absolute value we obtain, the following two graphs for the two choices of rho infinity. Remember, rho infinity is the user chosen value and rho is the response of the method. We see that the central difference and the linear acceleration methods are conditionally stable. That is, delta t has to be smaller than a certain value. All other methods are unconditionally stable. However, we have to keep in mind that by choosing larger time steps, we are also introducing numerical damping depending on the choice of rho infinity. 
Newmark alpha is the weakest, while the Newmark method applies the strongest damping. The x-axis also quantifies the frequency because t is the time period and the inverse of the time period is the frequency. So we see that the method dampens all high frequencies while the low frequencies are not damped. The concepts that we discussed might be very difficult to grasp and that is why we suggest you implement this method and test it yourself to obtain a better intuition of how the method works. Now it is time to practice what you studied here with programming exercises.